Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this evening is, of course, taken from our lesson, Joel, with quite a few hints from Psalm 103 as well. The theme being, remember, we are from dust. We pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the term Ash Wednesday? Ashes, right? We do, we'll have them on our foreheads, perhaps even on our hands as we rub them off. But they tend to linger, don't they? those ashes. They remind us of the blackness of our sin. What's the next thing that comes to your mind when you hear Ash Wednesday? Lent. Lent starts tonight, a season of repentance from the blackness of our sin. This year, the theme of our midweek services is a Lent to remember. The key word being, of course, remember. Each week, we'll focus on something God remembers or something God causes us to remember. And there's a big difference between God remembering and our remembering. When we remember something, too often it's like one person saying, you forgot my birthday, and another replying, no, I remembered it. I just didn't do anything about it. Whereas when God remembers, he does something about it. God remembers to act graciously toward us. Just so when God causes us to remember something, he also causes us to do something about it. He causes us to believe. He causes us to receive by faith his gracious gifts. By the time this Lenten season is over, my prayer is that the power of God's word will cause us to remember the way God remembers to do something about it with action. In the Bible text for tonight, the psalmist writes, God knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust, verse 14 of Psalm 103. When ashes are applied on Ash Wednesday, the words are traditionally spoken, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And that's the point, isn't it? We don't always remember that we are dust. So we can't or don't do anything about it. But God remembers and does something about it for us. As our text says, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Again, verse 13. God remembers that people are dust so that he shows compassion. Indeed, we will not remain dust. That's his promise. So essentially, it's no use hiding our true frame, and there really isn't a need to either. For God knows exactly how we were made to be and how we have become corrupted, how we have fallen from his very image. Yet God continues to craft human life by his hand and with his grace. It's still by his will that All of us have our existence. He continues to breathe into our nostrils the breath of life, to be a living creature. To be absolutely clear, the confession, from dust you came, is the description of how God made us from nothing in the first place. And if he did it once, he can do it again. That's what we're to take away from this. Again, from dust is a good thing. Returning to dust isn't uh, the best thing, but God can undo even that. And this is the point. This is what we will go away with today, as sobering a thought as being dust is. So sin has come into the world. It has drastically changed everything. Sin has ruined everything. Yet, even from this corrupting condition, by the grace of God and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, 
Can even our lips utter praises up to God because we are people still fearfully and wonderfully made? Or shall I say remade? Yes, this is why we still have true value today, even in the eyes of God. Whatever we've done to destroy what he made perfect in the beginning, he can make perfect again. And this is necessarily a key part of this truth, that it must be his creating hand once more, from his wonderful redesigning. If we think we can live without God, then we are most to be pitied and deserve only eternal separation from him. Right? What is turning to idols other than looking to other gods formed with our own hands, ironically, our ability to be creative, a gift from God? Why did God give us creativity then? Why to reflect his own glory, of course. We have choices, but none of them are considered good if they involve putting another above God. It's that simple. That is what God would have us again remember. There's that word. And so tonight we are jarred a little bit with this phrase, lest we forget our limitations from dust, you came, and to dust you shall return. And so now do we do well to remember that God shows compassion? Tonight we are given the opportunity to once again praise him for it, especially in this day and age, the tradition of Ash Wednesday in the face of a world that would teach us that over millions of years we evolved from some lower life form, not even necessarily from an animal to begin with. That's not quite what we mean when we say we came from dust. Some miraculous chemical reaction which started some kind of bacterial life form, which somehow evolved. No, no. The emphasis on the word dust is rooted in the concept that it is impossible for us to have come into being unless God had created us as we are, from the dust, instantly fully formed, fully human, from nothing. That was the whole point, which is why the concept of evolution is therefore offensive to our ears, because it's a complete denial of not only God's hand in creation itself, but in the original concept of it being good. You see, the only conceivable evolution that could naturally take place in the present context of ours is a flawed evolution. But God did not create us flawed. The corruption of nature happened after creation itself, which completely destroys any theory of evolution which must come by natural means. The point being that death and decay itself, that which is for us natural today, was not natural in the beginning. Essentially, the concept of evolution necessitates that there be death for there to be progress. Think about it. God, however, reverses death itself. And so the world would cry out to us Christians that we are not progressive enough. Oh yes, there are many meanings to that word. Today's main definition of progression is, of course, rooted in being able to live with all the pleasures of the heart, all one desires. But is that progress, or is it staying in one place because you are simply and well contented with what you have in this world and all that it alone has to offer? Time for a reality check. The truth is far from flattering. You came from dust. But even though 
we allow a little of it to be put on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday, do we really believe that we are dust and ashes? Because for all the boasting an unbeliever will make of all the pleasure he is able to grab out of this life, he will be forced to see the fruit of his unbelief, that it will one day mean that at the end of his time he is but dust. Oh, he'll tell himself that it doesn't really matter, but he'll eventually despair in his sin. And unfortunately, death will not be the end for him. And his greatest need, just as it is for you and for me, is to be spared by the grace of our loving God, our merciful God, this eternal fate of those who have sinned in the first place. So again, remember it well. We are from dust. Again, that's a good thing. That means we're here. But to dust we shall return. That's a reminder of the punishment for sin. So what is it that we are believing here as Christians? Nothing short of the fact that Christ became dust for us, his people, his children. Christ would become nothing for us, humbled himself to the point of dying for our sins on the cross. That's what it means to become dust. So God deals with his people with compassion as a father deals with his child in remembering that his people are dust and that's where we're heading once more. And so God does something about it. And we do well to remember it too. It's the ingeniousness of putting a cross on our forehead out of ashes. Because what we are and what we will be is all put on that cross. So... What do we do? Or shall I say, what does God cause us to do? Repent, of course, knowing he has had and still will have compassion. God forgave his people who looked to him of old through the prophets and today. He will have compassion on us through his son. Abraham got it. I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes, he says in Genesis 18. Just so we ask God to be gracious toward us and have compassion on us. Just the same. Because even though we are sinful, we are still the detailed and wonderful and valuable crown of God's creation. God remembers that we are dust but he handles his dust very carefully. When things shake and threaten God's handiwork, he handles us gently. St. Paul makes this connection in 1 Corinthians 15. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust, he says. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust and is the man of heaven. So also are those who are of heaven. God remembers that we are dust, but God sees us now through Jesus, and that makes us special dust. Not on our own. But in Christ, we are a new creation, still fearfully and wonderfully made. So remember this in the name and for the sake of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.